Good luck. Okay, so let's open our bishop. All right, and do the thing that we've been doing lately, which is decline this bishop exchange. Okay, likewise, they decline it. Um, hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's see. I think perhaps let's move the rook here. Also, let me change my volume settings because this seems a bit quiet. All right. Um... There's no harm in me pushing this right now, as far as I know. So let's get that pushed right now. Okay, they do defend this point. I should probably castle before anything gets too crazy. Okay, that's fine. Um, let me cut off that bishop just a bit. How do I spend a move here? Because I'm not totally sure what they're planning. I think I know what they're planning, but I'm not totally sure. Well, we could push this edge pawn. We will probably need that pushed at some point. It's not a loss to push it right now. Okay, I thought that's what they were planning. So against this, um, I'm going to avoid a bishop exchange and just play this here. So yeah, they can attack, and I can also attack. Um, let's get a pawn in hand. And bring the rook back here so it could be useful. Hmm. This is curious. Okay, I do need to my king to take cover here. Then I can take this pawn. Trying to figure out what's the safest way for me to do this. Do I drop on the rook's head or one down from there? I think I do want to hit the rook. I think that's safer. I'm not sure.
think this is even safer. I can just let the rook float there in a vulnerable position. Okay. Um. Suppose let's develop the silver. Okay, so they've built something that's hmm. I'm not sure what the shape is. Um, am I prepared to go into some madness here? Maybe. Do I want to spend one more tempo shoring this up a bit? Well, I am curious what use they would make of a tempo here. But am I curious enough to tempt fate and find out? Like, pushing the edge pawn doesn't seem like the most important thing for me to do. Um... Yeah, no, I should strengthen my castle just a little bit more before I do something drastic. Let's defend like this. There is a weakness with the strategy. And that's that I've given up the square that the gold was originally on there. So, I mean, the only way left to apply pressure would be something like this. So I have to try this. Okay. So they have a really low castle. And I've claimed a lot of space. They've retreated the rook without me having to do anything crazy. Um... And this is going to be a long game. I 
think. Okay, we'll fight for this center square. Let's bring this knight out to help attack. And now things get fun. All right, let's, I guess, try to make my rook more active. Well, that's risky. Let's do the less risky move first. Bring the bishop to somewhere useful. Hmm. Okay, we'll take more space. It's not the most influential move. I brushed it a bit because I am getting low on time. Oh. Wait, there's a tactic here, isn't there? Um, I guess I'm less nervous about the tactics now than I was a minute ago. Hmm, this is gonna get complicated. This is not great. This is definitely not great. Um, yeah, I need to give my king this breathing room. This is getting pretty critical. All right, so that defends against my obvious tactic. 
which was honestly a bit too obvious. Let's do something less obvious. Okay. I have to take this just as a general principle. Okay. I have to take this. I can't just leave the pawns in tension. Because leaving pawns in tension is what gets me killed. Um... That's surprising. Sure, let's oppose your rook. Why not? Let's exchange this. I had other ideas here. Um, man, there's a lot of tension in this position. Okay, let's strike their king. I don't know how I always get this sort of thing where, like, my king is doomed to run because my opponent's attack has landed first. I'm not sure. I guess part of that's because I improvise with my castle shape a little bit. It is interesting in shogi, some forks are possible that in chess would be improbable. Like, here's a triple fork. It hits the rook, lance, and knight. In chess, it would be hard to line that sort of thing up, because you practically have to drop a bishop on a square for something like that to occur. So, yeah, they have broken into my defense. I acknowledge that. Nicely done. Um, I just can't panic about it. Alright, my lance is under attack. They're threatening a drop. I'm not sure what happens after they drop, to be honest. Um... So, let's take a turn to attack this rook here. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad idea. Also, I should calm down because this is not chess. I will, if I desire, have 60 seconds to think about every position. Although this particular move seemed uh, forced. But other moves might not be so obvious. So if I calm down, I could have more time to think about these positions. So. 
So my plan was to do another fork. I think it's still a reasonable plan. Um, I have to move my horse. This is as good a place as any to move it to. So let's do that. I don't like having the rook staring down at my king. Um, maybe for one turn I tolerate that. No, let's not. Let's force this to move. And the reasoning here is um, I protect my king, and if the rook moves to the edge file, I can force the rook to move more times. Yes, it's not moving to the edge file here. I could attack it directly. I think it's more sensible for me to just take this lance. Um... Actually, I can trap the rook. Trapping the rook looks better. Let's go for that. Now, admittedly, there is one escape for the rook. Well, actually, no. Wait. That's complicated. By attempting to trap the rook, I've, in, if, in essence, given them a lance. Um, hmm. So the rook is one easy target to aim at. Um... We'll see in just a minute, depending how that goes, uh, we might start aiming at the other target. Yeah, I'm trying to think about there's two ways I can proceed with attacking here, beyond simply chasing the rook and trying to protect my king. I think the defense of my king is a noble ambition. It's This isn't a wasted move. Taking the lance could have been cleaner, uh, but I was afraid that you know they'd eventually gain a lance and I'd be back where I started and my horse would not be in a good position. Uh, my horse still isn't in... Well, my horse is in an okay position here. I didn't expect that. Um, that's clever. Uh, problem is, I have a clever move I can do here. Well, no, it's not... My move is not as clever. Yeah. So, if I want to gain a tempo, the way to gain a tempo is to run away. And my gold covers my king's butt. So, I can run away, and the rook does not promote. If I did silver takes, the rook could have taken this pawn. If I did king takes token, they could have exchanged lances with check and then dropped another lance to pin my horse. So I instead prefer this way where this token is on the edge of the board and the lances are directly opposing each other. 
And they spend a turn to save the rook, and I get a free lance. Uh, that seems safer to me than the alternative. Alright. So, how much do I want to chase this um, rook? It's an endless source of comedy. Um, but I think the correct thing to do is to aim where I should have been aiming this entire time. But this rook is a bit of a bother. Why, why would I leave it here? Um, hmm. Yeah, let's... I forgot that this is a sacrifice, but that's okay. It's the smallest of sacrifices. And it does actually make a nice impact on their castle if they take this, so... Let's pretend we sack that on purpose. Um... All right, so I I know my next move. I don't need to play it instantaneously. I don't know my next next move, so let's try to figure that out. Okay, the weak point in their castle is actually the head of the silver here. I do well to bear that in mind. Um... Also, let's not get mauled by this rook by being careless. Yeah, so I think we're doing okay. As long as I don't give him... <laughs> well, we're not going to end that statement. Not until I'm absolutely sure that I'm not going to accidentally give him a particular thing. Um, hmm. As I think more about it, this sacrifice is even stronger than I thought it was. Um, because if they take that, I can just drop a lance on this file. And they can't stop me from promoting another pawn in that same place. Like, yeah, I could chase the rook, or I could chase the silver which is hanging, and then promote another pawn and again hit the rook. Um, there's probably some tactics that I'm not aware of, but... Yeah, no, to defend my king, placing the lance makes some sense. Um... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's use this to help defend. Oh, actually, that could be even stronger than... No, it's not stronger than I anticipated. Just kidding. All right. So they're asking if I want to bring my lance forward. I think, honestly, the answer is no, I'm not really interested in doing that. Um... Maybe I erred. This might be some subtle error, or not so subtle error on my part. Um, hmm. I don't want to bring the lance forward, but I don't see a problem with it. That I've been thinking about. Do I again want to bring this forward? 
Again, I'm not seeing an immediate problem here. Um, hmm. I'm confused why we're going down this line. I mean, yeah, they're collecting my lance, but at what cost? All right. I guess they really want a lance. That's fine, I guess. I guess this also points out just how slow this lance attack is. That probably there were better attacking moves available to me that don't cost me a lance. Um... Yeah, throughout this combination, I've been considering, oh, is this a good time to sacrifice the lance? What kind of compensation could I get if I sacrificed it? That sort of thing. And, yeah, it's not that as exciting as I thought it was at first. The compensation I get for sacking, it's not that great. Here, though, um, hmm. This is where things get interesting. So they've been trying to get their rook to the square to the right of my lance for several turns now. Um. Yeah, I think I want to proceed with this here. So I'm not moving my horse. I ain't moving it. I could try to move it to hit the rook and like do tricky stuff and try to defend the lance in other ways or get compensation for it. Instead, I'm going to directly attack. Um, oh! Oh! They invest their silver in defense. That's one fewer attacker for me to worry about. Um, yeah, I was thinking if the silver drew forward, my lance could take and then attack the rook directly again. Um, this is odd in so many ways. Sanjubyo. Okay, we'll attack the rook, and I assume he's taking one of my pieces. Yeah, he takes this one. Um, so we get to attack the rook directly again. That rook ain't going to promote next to my king. That's all I'm saying. Um, but also... Yes, my horse is actually doing good defensive work where it's stationed. And... I can pursue their silver here. Okay, this is a free pawn. Hmm. Is there any tactic here for me to be aware of? I'm looking. I don't see anything. We're going to be up six pawns now. Not that that does any good for us. I'm highly confident that my attack strikes one tempo before theirs. Sure. Uh, 
Uh, do I promote here? No, yeah, it's safer to promote than to not promote in this position. What? So, the problem with playing Twin Gold Castle is that, I mean, yeah, this is normal to invest three generals in defense. That's totally normal. But the problem is that you're investing three generals in defense without any way of, like, easily moving forward. So I can pot shot all these guys one by one. Um... Or whatever the term is for picking off these targets. Um, yeah, I'm a bit confused. Okay, let's defend this another way. So as wonderful as this horse has been, hmm, I wonder. <sighs> I wonder. How much trouble am I in if I exchange this way? Oh, well, no matter how I recapture, they can pin down the line here. Um, yeah, I need my rook to put pressure on their king. So we're going to take with the horse. And if they try anything tricky, we put a pawn in front of our horse, and it's fine. Now, I'm not saying how f close to the horse we're putting the pawn, if we put one. But I have ideas. Right. So this only works because my horse is pinned. What if my horse were not pinned? Let's find out. All right, so they choose to take my horse. Um, as much as I want the rook, it might be better to not take it here. I don't know. Things get scary if they have too many attacking pieces. I don't want to liquidate everything. Sanjuvio. Yeah, let's play this nice defensive move here. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, I guess we'll attack directly. That looks interesting. So the idea is that if this rook runs to some squares, um, my silver could approach this castle. But also I'm defending in case there's like some crazy tactic that like somehow my rook gets pinned. My silver is now fighting back.
Okay, so I snap my silver. I'm pretty sure I have to take the rook here. Yeah, that's clever because there's a pin to collect my rook after this. Um, yeah, I should have been a little bit more alert to what was going on here. There was probably some better way I could defend against this. That said, obviously I can't Nifu, but I could block with something else. And they only have one lance. Well, something else, I guess, would be a knight. So rather than moving my knight in front, I should defend with another knight. I think. It's not pleasant. My force is not quite overwhelming just yet. Yeah, we're going to defend this point and try to hold it. And it's going to be painful, but it seems necessary to try to defend this way. All right. Um, okay, I think I want to put my rook back to where it used to be active. I acknowledge I'm probably giving a piece at some point here somehow. That's just one piece. That's okay. Sanjubio. Yeah, that looks like the safest place available for the Rook. Short of sticking it behind the Lance where it's just useless. Um, oh. All right, all right. This sucks. Well, this is unpleasant. Um, well... Guess we have to defend. Hmm. I guess that's the best defensive move I can think up of in this time control. So yeah, they get a knight, and if they place the knight here, this would fork two golds. So we're going to recapture with um, a gold general. So it takes four pieces for an attack to never run out, and they do have potentially four attacking me. That's a bit disturbing. Um, thankfully, my king is not the easiest to approach here. So I guess my plan would be to take this promoted silver, move it down, and take the lance to free me from this crazy bind. Or promote my token and then use another pawn somehow to get out of this. Yeah, so my lance drop on the third file was not a good idea. Or rather, maybe it was an okay idea, just not a good one. Yeah, this freaking lance. Oh, 
Okay, I have an idea. Well, no. <sighs> My plan keeps involving Nifu, and I can't do the Ifu. Alright, finally this piece lands on the board. We know exactly where it landed. It does have plans to promote. Well, that's honestly not the scariest thing ever. Um, hmm. There's too much to consider. Okay, somehow my audio dropped out. I can't hear the counting anymore. So I'll just have to be very careful to not uh, lose on time. Yeah, I anticipated this is why they put the bishop there, so I could promote down here. Um, this is unusual, but I've trapped their horse. I didn't expect that. Um, I mean, sure... I saw that the horse could promote here. What's unusual is that my silver and gold thoroughly encase this thing. So there's not a way for the horse to escape. Um, all right, let's check. Um, I don't need to take this. Taking would just accelerate their attack. So let's run away. And then running away from the edge of the board where, like if I do something careless on an edge, I get checkmated. If I do something in the care careless in the center of the board, yeah, okay, my king could get forked. I could lose a rook or a bishop or something like that, but I'm not getting checkmated if I mess up in the center. And... Yeah, as it stands right now, I have a pretty decent material advantage. So we're going to play the odds here. Um, all right, let's... Uh, wait, is that smarter or is it smarter to do this? I'm not Thank sure. You. Yeah, I think this is fine. It might not matter which way I go, whether I do silver takes or king takes. If silver takes, the silver helps cover some squares that are a bit soft near the center of the board. So, eventually I'll stop playing cowardly moves and do some kind of an attack. <laughs> eventually. Um, I apologize for those who wanted a more... I don't know. Um, there might have been some other way for me to play this. Alright, so... Hmm.
This is the slowest attack ever, but it works. So the plan is to come back and start collecting these pieces that are all lined up. Also, I finally dealt with that Nifu issue that, like, I'm less likely to accidentally throw the game here. Um, yeah, I was a bit concerned about this. Um, hmm. I probably should have been more concerned. Yeah, my level of concern is not appropriate here. Wait, no, I... I survived this, but my goodness, what am I doing? What am I doing? I have to exchange here. Can't just give away a gold for nothing. But uh, this strengthens their attack. I'm not thrilled about this state of affairs here. My king is in the center of the board. Thankfully, I have both bishops and both rooks, so my king is not the easiest target in the universe. It is a target, it's just not an easy target. So we'll keep playing defensive moves until I have the common sense to get my king out of here. But retreating with the king know. is also a defensive move, and I'm trying to play an attack here. And probably shouldn't be so gung ho about my own attack while my defense is so lackluster. All right, let's get the king the hell out of here. So, yeah. If the knight moves, I have two pieces attacking the silver, so I could take twice uh continue gaining two for one two for one over and over as i am doing okay so they gain a knight um, I don't see how the knight destroys me. I don't want to exchange too many p. Oh, I can finally get the rook out of here, can't I? But then they have a knight fork. It's just sad that, like... All my best moves are all these super cowardly things because they keep correctly um, attacking um, at circumstances where their attack is eventually going to run out, but they have not blundered. They've made subtle error after subtle error over and over, and I'm sure I've done the same on my attack. Um, but yeah, each time they make a subtle error, I'm managing to gain one piece or one pawn over and over. And it's adding up. It's just this is not generally how Shogi is played, because there's so many better ways for me to play it.
But uh, now if I take this knight, they have this fork. Um, and I don't have a checkmate. So... Okay, so we're going to continue attempting to break this extremely strong castle shape. Oh, well, okay, yeah, they immediately point out the flaw of my not taking this pawn. Okay. I suppose I should have seen this. Good god, it's difficult to break this castle. Um, I got impatient. So... Yeah, this is going to take more and more turns every time I mess up. Um, fine, I have to defend. I can't just let this sit there. And I've already got my pawn moved out to 5-5. Five five. Okay, so yeah, they attack my uh, anchor piece, as they should. Um... They're really good at attacking. I, and I am not. I'm at a loss for ideas. I'm just going to run away. Yep. Yep. That was destined to happen. Alright. So, they've got this promoted knight on the edge. They've got a lance in hand. Now I have to collect pieces all over again. Um... My gold is vulnerable here. I want to activate my rook, but they keep blocking my freaking rook, so I don't have a good way to activate it. I'll just continue trading two for one, two for one, as I've been doing most of the game. And we're just going to continue suffering on my part till I somehow manage to take all of their pieces. That seems to be the plan. Because I can't figure out how to get my rook active. I deliberately did this to trap their bishop, and I won it. It's just that it made all my pieces inactive when I did that. Okay, we're going to draw this promoted knight away from my castle before something bad happens. Um, and I don't like that my king and rook are so close. I don't know what to do to fix that. Sanjubio. Okay, we're just going to checkmate them. Enough of this. It's finally my turn.
Even if somehow I lose my rook, it's okay. So they need four pieces for their attack to not run out. I count this promoted knight as half a piece. It's a bit distant. It's a bit hard to reach my king from that promoted knight. It still has an effect. A very vexing, annoying effect. But, um, yeah, no, I think I'm okay. Right. So the idea here is as my run king runs away from their pawns, they're able to continue placing its pieces to pursue my king. But eventually this wave of pieces does run out. And eventually I get to land this contact check and my armada of pieces breaks through and checkmates them. Right. So they have a gold, a lance, and a pawn. I'm trying to find a mate so I don't have to continue dilly dallying. Um, okay, you know, this is sufficient. If they place the gold in defense, I'm not getting checkmated. Yeah, uh, the gold as a defensive piece is the correct play here. Banking on me very thoroughly messing this up but it's the best defense. And now we just calm things down a bit. Uh, where do I want to place this? Um, okay, this is on 5-2, so I need to make a legal move. Um, yeah. Makes sense for them to pursue my king. Um, okay, we're going to attack with this bishop here. And certainly I have checkmate um, if they do something other than defend. Yeah, so they have to play another defensive move. Um... Hmm. I surround your king, finally. Otherwise, the king races up the board, and I don't think I have a mate. Incredibly. Um, 
Maybe I did because my knight protects both of these pawns. Yeah, maybe I hallucinated here. And I apologize to my opponent if I had a better Sometimes attacking move and I played this instead. Because it looks like I had a better attacking move, but... <sighs> I just don't know how to break Sometimes this damn shape. It's a really strong shape. It's super resilient. Um, it's not invincible, so we're going to find that eventually I do checkmate this. Uh, it's just not easy. All right. So if the lance takes, I can drop a silver with checkmate. Uh, if the king takes, no doubt there's something else here. Thanks for the game. Apologies if I almost certainly messed up something in this attack. Uh, so apologize if I drug things out more than they needed to be. Um, yeah, that was a long game. Sorry that... Um, it, it might have felt as if I was dragging things out. You kept attacking and kept attacking, and I could not find a way to easily break your castle here. So I kept, in time pressure, resorting to playing safe-looking moves. Um, but, yeah, eventually... Um, yeah, the material deficit was too much. Yeah, at that one point in the game where I could have taken on... Oh, I can't draw a little circle there, but when I could have taken the pawn that you dropped on the fourth file instead of allowing you to continue attacking, I should have taken that pawn. Um, yeah, maybe I should start from the beginning. Yeah, I didn't find a better way to attack. Well, I think that's the challenge here. As Even with this castle... Okay, first of all, this pawn drop I did was probably not as good as just dropping it up one square here. Um, yeah, dropping it back here I thought was a little bit safer, but eventually having... my king would need the 2-8 square to dodge your bishop. So I probably should have placed the pawn up one to begin with, so I lost an entire move there. And yeah, you built a really solid shape. This is super solid. I've played this against uh, Destiny before. We both we played a double swinging rook game, and he crushed me. But it took a while because, like, I built this solid shape, and he recommended that it's even though this is a nice shape, it's very inflexible and does not control a lot of space. So that's the trade off you're making here: is that you're conceding most of the board. Uh, I'm sorry, your your pawns are all on this line here. Um, so your pieces don't extend their reach beyond this little box in the corner. In exchange for that, uh, your remaining pieces get to attack. But it's difficult to play. Um, yeah. Yeah, Double Swinging Rook is very exciting and very challenging. I think. I mean, every opening is challenging, but um, normally the faster attacker in Double Swinging Rook uh, does break through. Um, so yeah, that was good that you activated your bishop. Um, yeah, and then you activate your rook across the rank. So I've probably made some several mistakes at this point, one of which being putting the pawn down here. But now your rook controls anywhere that I might want to attack. So this is very well placed. It's just now the question becomes um, how without compromising the shape of your castle do you manage to work with this tiny little box that you've given yourself and like find an attack over here or here or something. It's not easy. Um, so, yeah, I, tactics got tricky here. I should have considered this. Um, it might not be good. 
but I should have at least considered it. Um, because, like, somehow if this breaks up your attack and allows me to properly defend my king, then I'm okay, but... Yeah, maybe it's... maybe what I did is fine. Yeah, I just put a lot of pressure, and I didn't see how you were attacking here, so... Yeah, I finally had to defend this way, anticipating that if somehow things go wrong and this bishop forks me, I need my king to run out here. Um... And, yeah, I mean, moving the rook to the third file makes sense. Um, I'm trying to remember what the recipe is for an attack. It's like the, the pawn and silver and bishop and knight and rook or something. I'm trying to remember the ordering in which this attack normally proceeds. Um... Yeah, I guess the third file, like, that does break my pin, for sure. And I've not made any obvious weaknesses, at least that I see. But the silver, I guess, is floating back here. Maybe this is why... I mean, you have a really, really solid castle with four generals defending it. But if you have no generals in the attack, and it's kind of hard to see how you're going to do a pawn breakthrough... Um, I get that the knight move feels good, but it might be slow, too. I don't know. I've never figured out a correct way to play this castle and also manage an attack, so I'm a bit confused. I might have to look at other people's games to figure it out. But yeah, I think the silver in combination with the pawns should have some ideas here. I just couldn't figure it out. It's just really hard. Um, and it's because I thought you didn't have some crashing through attack that, like, my last few moves here, I've been, like, pushing this pawn, pushing this pawn, pushing this, because your silver is still floating back here, and I didn't really see how you would break open any file. So that's why I just kept, like, gradually taking space. Oh, I took the 5-5 five, five square, too. I like doing... I like taking this... But this is my idea, and it's probably a bad one. Maybe I should be using the silver to cover the square instead, and the silver would exert influence here too. Yeah, this is probably what I should have done. Uh, especially because my silver never was useful for any other purpose. I was afraid that, like, I don't know. If somehow bishops exchanged and my silver were floating out here, I'd have too many floating pieces. But um, yeah, this pawn push was super weakening. I should not have done it. And it blocks my rook too. Uh, so yeah, I guess we both made some strategic questionable things. Although you did break this pin. You got your rook out of this pin. Um does threaten to advance on this file. Yeah, this is a good move too. Um, so, yeah, at this point I was wondering, I don't know everything about edge file to suit G. Um, yeah, I was wondering about several things like pawn drops around here or there just sacking a lance here to try to break in, but my king can run both directions. Um, if you're... Yeah, no, your pawn move looks good, too. Um, yeah, I took back... I guess my confusion was just this followed by the pawn, pawn drop. Um... Because the pawn itself can only attack the square. It does prepare like lance takes, which is powerful, but it's not immediate. So that's when I like immediately struck back. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ideas here. 
And I'm sure any engine would criticize uh, both of our moves and find better things for both of us. Again, like this shows, if I'm pushing this, I've given my bishop a path into the game, but my rook is cut off. And cutting off my rook is almost fatal, but not quite. Um, it's like, I should be considering pawn 5-5 five five to remedy my mistake here, but then your bishop gets super active, and I don't like that. Um, but yeah, I think if you're going to drop this pawn, it might have been better to just get that over with first, see how I react to it, and then push here. Um... That's my guess. I don't know for sure, though. But yeah, there's several ways to play this. Like, rook takes might make sense. Lance takes might make sense. Other pawn drops might also be useful for various things. Um, I'm not sure if a knight advance is too crazy or not. It looks a bit crazy. Silver's still sitting back here, so my king, it takes four pieces to attack, and if the silver's back here, uh, what can you do? But, I don't know. Double swinging rook can sometimes, you can sometimes build an attack without a silver, depending on the position. So yeah, I see this, I strike right away. Um, I think this is a mistake, uh, because I get to play this. And that's a fork. And the next proverb in Shogi is don't run from a fork. But you kind of have to run. But yeah, running is losing a move. I think the reason they tell you don't run from a fork is that every time you run, you lose one move. So there can be positions where losing one move is okay. Um, but here you're losing a move and a knight. Um, let's see. Not sure if taking the pawn on 3-5 is best. Yeah, this is interesting too. This gets really complicated. Um, um, so an alternative might have been bringing the rook back here. Um... Or you're saying maybe you can avoid exchanging the bishop. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry, you're saying, yeah. Uh, if you, like, play to the side here, maybe you can avoid exchanging the bishop. So, my reaction I was having here was I wanted to take this pawn. That's That was my feeling in the heat of the moment. Um... I mean, yeah, that might be possible. Uh, it's just this pawn actually like makes it hard for your silver to approach my king. Um, and I, I don't know, somehow I might find some way to secure my king's position. Maybe. Um, so, yeah, you could avoid exchanging the bishop. I just don't see a path forward for the silver because like all of my pieces coordinate to cut off anywhere any of your pieces might want to move. Let me see. Uh, oh yeah, let me hand over the hat if that's fine. Maybe that'll help us uh, communicate better. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, Let me follow. I've given you the hat if you're interested in showing stuff. Um, yeah. It's this pawn drop first. Yeah, force me to like commit to something. I wasn't sure how to react to this. I was in time pressure and trying to figure it out. Um, it's a good move, I think. So let me see a comment. Yeah, maybe this has to be first. I agree. 
because you know, this forces me to select, like, am I taking the pawn? Am I running away? Am I doing something else? I don't even know what the something else might be. I don't have a lot of options here. Maybe I run into it. But yeah, I think this is the way that puts the greatest question to me, because then I don't get to, like, ask if you want to exchange bishops and things like that. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Um, so, I guess one sample variation would be this, but probably you get to attack with a knight. Well, no. How does this work? Um... Still doesn't look obvious what's going on. Oh, right, because then, yeah, that's a little trick that's useful. Um, and I guess at this point I start running. Yeah, that makes sense. That's probably the cleaner way for you to attack here. It still takes four pieces for an attack to be successful. And you have a number that's very close to four. But, um, yeah, that's definitely more exciting than what happened in the game. I could be losing here. Oh, especially now that I've given up this square, the uh, one seven square. Yeah, yeah, it looks like I'm in trouble. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So that's that makes sense. So yeah, your attack definitely breaks in first here. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Very good. But yeah, after this didn't happen um yeah my attack i don't know <laughs> i had such a clumsy attack um but i dominated most of the space of the board and was uh, able to continuously trade um one piece for two pieces over and over um so yeah eventually uh I survived this, but yeah, I think this would have been a much cleaner way for you to attack here. I'm not sure what else there is um, to the game, because that was like the focal point. And after this got missed, just... I mean, there was one point later on in the game where... Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's one point later in this game... Let's see. Oh, was there anything else that I needed to create? Oh, yeah, so... Yeah, like you pointed out, once the bishops got exchanged, this was possible. Um, so I do criticize this move. Um, because it gives me a free move. Um, unfortunately. I mean, it'd be great. This is a very powerful attack. It's just, I get a free tempo out of it. Uh, I wasn't sure whether defending the knight or defending the lance was better, but you might you probably picked the better option. Uh, yeah, it had me spooked for a bit. There might have been better ways for me to attack this. I don't know. I could also just take in the lance directly. Uh, I was afraid you'd take a lance and somehow this would be bad for me, but it's, I'm probably not thinking logically here. Yeah, if I just remove this lance, I don't have to worry about it. I was worried about this, but I don't need to be. 
I'm not sure how I attack. Attacking's hard. <laughs> um, I mean, I did want to like bring my rook up and over, but I have a pawn in the way, and my king's kind of exposed, and it's... I don't know. It's not so clear. Maybe what I did was okay. Um, here, again, I could have considered taking this. Probably should have considered taking it more than I did. I don't know. Because, yeah, uh, this token move was fast and aggressive as it should be. And it makes sense that you don't want to give me the rook because I like my rooks. Um, but I think after I get the lance for free, that's kind of an issue. Uh, you just forgot about the bishop drop. Yeah, I could see that. My lance drop I criticized during the game, and maybe a bit after the game. We've heard plenty about me criticizing it, because it's just such a slow move. There's almost certainly many better moves that I could have played. My rook is still uh, babysitting this square. Um, so I can't just, like, lift this pawn and bring the rook over and try to promote it. Because my rook has some of the responsibility here, because my castle is super weird. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how best to attack. Might have been made more sense for me to just oppose the rook directly. I don't know. It's hard. Or, yeah, that's fine. Um... So that was clever for you to win my lance. Um, it's also good that you didn't just play the thing I wanted you to play. Like, I wanted to see, just let me in and I'll chase your rook again. And yeah, didn't let me do that. Actually, I, I plan to like do this first and then promote. So it's good that you uh, place this in defense. It's not an enjoyable position to do this, but you had to do it. Um, and yeah, I think you did the best possible defense from here on out. It was just not easy. Um, let's see, was there some other trick here? So I was thinking a little bit about this. Um... And this gets maybe a little confusing, but um, I do get a rook through this, so yeah, this might not be what you're looking for, but it's a possibility. Um, instead, I completely shut down... Well, I say I completely shut down your attack, but I don't. Um... Let's see, what happened in the game is you sacked here, which is a very good sack. Um, yeah, I've been thinking, like, how the hell do I break in here? Maybe the best way for me to not lose my rook is just to defend my silver. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But you played another resourceful move when I messed up in this endgame. So, yeah, I should have just taken this pawn. And that way you don't get to place a knight right next to my castle. Um, so that was a big miss on my part. But, yeah, I think you played a very good and reasonable defense... I'm sorry I prolonged this game. There's probably ways I could have attacked better. But, um, yeah, I think your conclusion about um, how it is that you attack my castle, um, just the move order here, would have made this more interesting. Usually, I guess, um, well, I guess this is a pawn tension. Um, but I guess before, uh, I don't know, it's common to do a pawn drop sacrifice before you start the attack. Because, like, once the attack is started, 
uh, that offers other defensive opportunities. And it might be possible to just ignore this and run away from it. Whereas, like, before you've committed this... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not making any sense here. But yeah, Tsuji with sacrifices generally precede the attack. Uh, that way you can see how your opponent's going to react to it. Because um, there's multiple ways I could react. I could take this way, I could take that way. I could run away, or I could run into this. So... Um, yeah, sorry I don't have more pragmatic advice on this front. Uh, I used to play this too as Gota. There's, so if you're playing 4th file Rook, absolutely this makes sense. If you're playing Central file or 3rd file Rook, you don't have to play this right away. Um, this is something that Shogi Harbor had pointed out to me when I'd been just doing this out of instinct. Is that Senta closed this diagonal, so it's not necessary to double close it. Um, so that might be some other pragmatic advice, but um, yeah, if you want to play fourth foul rook, then or if you're committed to playing this shape, sure, it it could be great to push this right away. You have your silver active, that's great. Um, I played this because I was unsure where your rook was going to land. Um, I played this also because I was unsure where the rook was going. And then you showed me, okay, this is where the rook's going. And that's perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, once I've seen where the rook goes, I make my decision about, am I playing the king down here, or do I want to put the king over here? Or do, would I rather put the king here? Um, so that was what these edge pawn pushes were uh, about. So... I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, just observing what it is here. Um, yeah, and then I activate my rook on the file. And I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I'm not even aware of. Perhaps instead of me pushing uh, this pawn, perhaps I should have brought up the silver. But the same idea that we could still see a very similar sequence of moves. But my ambition could be to reopen this diagonal because you've put a pawn here. So probably I should try to get my silver into the center and activate my bishop um, while this pawn's still here. Of course, if I try to do this, this might provoke you to do that. Um, and then we get some fun things that I don't, I'm not super familiar with. Um, but yeah, my motivation for reopening this while this pawn is pinned here is twofold. One, because I like pinning the pawn, but two, um, because my rook could cover across the rank. So if you don't play this pawn to 4 4, it's a little bit harder for me to play the rook to defend against your rook's attack. So just some ideas. I'm not... I've played this swinging rook and double swinging rook a lot. I'm still not the leading expert. I'm sure there's folks in our Shogi Harbor Discord that study this far more than I do. But um, yeah, here the reason I've not played that, even though it's a great defensive move, is... I was thinking about this too. So the silver comes up, and I don't have an easy way to defend this. Like if I could bring this up and this out or something, that could maybe be fun, but I've been considering do I want to sack this? And I decided against it, but it might be interesting too. Just trying to break open. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. This is a very aggressive attack. But you do need to build a castle, and the, the longer you delay on it, the more limited your options are as to which pawns you can push. Um, so I kind of like squeezed you into a position where like, the, this pawn push is not 
available anymore. And if you've been considering other pawn pushes, I would have tried to put up some resistance against them. So I'm trying to force you to play the shape that you ultimately did select here, which is twin gold, because that kind of boxes in your king. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, those are, I guess, my thoughts about the opening. You'll probably find a lot of thoughts by other folks in the Shucky Harbor Discord. And it'll be interesting to see um, as we do more teaching ladders and as the All-American Fall Tournament? Winter Tournament? I forget which it is. I think it's Fall. As it progresses, we'll get to see a number of players do interesting things too. Um, I'm a bit anxious about my upcoming game, which is why I'm playing in this teaching ladder again. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a fun game. Thanks for gaming analysis. Thanks for your patience, because apparently I don't know how to checkmate until this, but I found it. But yeah, very fun game. Uh, glad you enjoyed it too.